If you're happy enough with the couch, you can stay for as long as you please. Thanks, but I'll be leaving in the morning. I'm going away forever. Oh, big deal, kid. So what if you've been thrown out of school? <laughs> I always got kicked out of school. Beginning in kindergarten. No, that's not it. I don't give a damn about being kicked out. Well, then? It's useless to try and explain it to you. You wouldn't understand. It all seems so absurd. So fantastic. All I can do is get away from here as soon as possible. Would you mind if I use the bathroom? I'd like to dry off. No, of course not. Go ahead. Why don't you close it? That's better. It was just the wind. You sure are in bad shape. You have to tell me all about it. The wind. The windows burst open. I got scared. No, that's not it. I mean, what it is that's got you so upset? Okay, you can tell me about it later.
morning. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Miss Daniel. Good morning. May I help you? Yes, I'm Susie Bannon. We expected you yesterday evening. You wrote us that... Right, uh, I did arrive last night about 10 o'clock, but um, the door was locked, and somebody on the call box said they didn't know who I was and couldn't let me in. Who said that to you? I don't know. She didn't say what her name was. I'm so sorry. Well, at any rate, now you're here, Manga. So, welcome to our academy. I'm Miss Tanner, one of the instructors. Nice to meet you. Come along. I'd like to introduce you to Madame Blanc, our vice directress. She was a very famous ballerina. Madame Blanc. Yes? Susie Banyan, our new student. Oh, yes. Excuse me, gentlemen. Of course, ma'am. You're pretty. Very pretty indeed. There, Louise. I knew a woman called Banyan years ago in New York. Carol Banyan. She's my aunt. Oh, good. She's a marvelous woman, a friend and benefactress of artists everywhere. I'm delighted to have her niece here. Well, I offer you our Academy's official welcome in the name of our directress, who unfortunately is not here at the moment. She's traveling abroad. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Albert, please wait for me upstairs. He's my nephew. I'm very attached to him. Well, I must tell you what I have to say very quickly, because those gentlemen are waiting for me. Something terrible, truly horrible has happened. One of our students, Pat Hingle, who was expelled just yesterday for improper conduct, was murdered last night by some madman. It's a frightening story. But I always warn our students, don't I, Miss Tanner? I tell them to be careful not to get involved with questionable friendships. Now, what I wanted to tell you is that your room here isn't free. Just a slight hit. Yes, but don't worry. We've already found you a place to stay with one of our third-year students who lives in town. You'll have to pay 50 of your American dollars a week. But it's a good price, and you can deduct it from your fee here. And now I entrust you to the care of Miss Tanner, one of our veteran teachers here. Don't be upset if she seems a little stern or silly. It's only her manner. She's even that way with me. She really is an invaluable teacher. I do tell her Come with me. And now, gentlemen. As you know, our courses last three years, and you must pass an exam at the end of each year. So, the girl left the school about 11 o'clock in the evening. That's my information. Excuse me. When I got here last night, about 11 o'clock, I saw a girl leaving the school. She's a new student. She just arrived. What did she look like? Well, she had blonde hair and was wearing a brown raincoat. What did she do? I don't know. I only saw her for a minute in the middle of a storm. So you see, it really was 11 o'clock. Coming. We don't teach her how to dance here because we presume that our students already know how to do that. This is an established academy dedicated to specializing. This is Pavlos, our general handyman. He's really ugly, isn't he? Don't be afraid to say so. I can't understand you anyway. He speaks only Romanian. You see that gorgeous smile? He's felt very handsome ever since he got those false teeth. Last year, he discovered he had gingivitis of the gums. So he had all his teeth pulled. The top row one morning, the bottom row a day later. And bang! Where are we going? To the locker room. We also have a swimming pool, which you can use when you want. Miss Tana, I have something to tell you. Spock, Spock, Polly, Who said that? Shut up! That's enough of these little games for the moment. I want to introduce Susie Banyan, our new student. You'll find several fellow Americans among these girls. Miriam, for one. Hello. Hi. Your locker is over there. You'll find everything in there except shoes. For today, you can borrow shoes from someone who has two pairs. Hurry up, everybody. I'll be waiting for all of you in the red room. Come with me. Squawk, squawk, squawk. Mata Hare is going to file her report. <laughs> my name is Anka, and you're my tenant. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. They uh, tell me you have to give me $50 a week. Yeah. In advance. Well, don't worry if you oh, think I'm not... Don't get hot under the collar. That's how people are here. Uh, can anybody lend me a pair of shoes? Yes, me. Oh, thank you. 
If you want to buy them, I can make you a nice price. 50 marks. Oh, no thanks. I already have some in my suitcase. I just need a pair for today. But if you'd rather not. No. Okay. Go ahead. Take them. But uh, give them back. Um. Of course. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. It doesn't matter. Do they shake you up with all that talk about money? Well, I'm not exactly used to it. Same with me at first. Then I found out it's a charming habit around here. Susie. Sarah. I once read that names which begin with the letter S are the names of snakes. After I finish the course, I've got an offer from the State School of Ballet in Geneva. What about you? Well, I'll go back to the States, but I'm still not exactly sure what I'll do. Hey, thanks. My room is really pretty. Like it? Uh-huh. That makes me happy. I bet we'll do nicely together. I think you're sweet. Even if I have the name of a snake? Oh, I was just kidding. Don't tell me you're as touchy as Sarah. No. No, no, no. You did the right thing. Hi. Hi. Oh, you didn't have to bring these over here. I could have picked them up myself tomorrow. Oh, I thought you might be needing them. Yes, but it really wasn't necessary. Anyway, thanks a lot. Oh, no, it's nothing. Ciao. Ciao. Don't you want to stay for a while? No, thanks. Oh, I can't. Please. I live at the school, so I've got to be back for supper in half an hour. No. I have to. Just for a minute? No, no, really. I have to be going. They get very upset if you show up late for something. Okay, Sunday. Ciao. No, not before lunch. Sunday. See you tomorrow. Bye. Uh, no, go on. Ah, uh, I know. You caught one. Yes, yes, I can hear you very well. Didn't you see how he was blushing? Except he doesn't have any, um, and he never has enough money for room and board at school. That's why that bitch Tanner has got him under her thumb. She gives him a thousand and one errands to do. <laughs> sure. I got it. Okay. Call me back tomorrow evening. Give me a chance to think it over. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Anyway, he is cute. Poor Pat. She liked him a lot. That poor kid ending up like that. I can't even think about it. I heard you saw her yesterday evening. Uh-huh, outside the school. She was acting very strange. Mumbling to herself. She really felt terrible when they kicked her out. But she really deserved it. There was so much noise. God, was she difficult. She was saying things that made no sense. She was always arguing, causing trouble. was in a jam. on the list this morning come with me to the yellow room good morning miss Turner. susie good morning madam blank i've got good news for you we have it all arranged your room is ready for you 
Oh. Isn't that marvelous? You can move in today if you like. But I'd rather stay at Olga's if it's okay. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me, my dear, but in your letter of enrollment, you said you'd be boarding at the school. I know, but... The room is free now. Well, I didn't think it was so important. As you wish. If that's what you want, so be it. idea you are so strong-willed. I see that when you make up your mind about something, nothing will change it for you. My compliments. century, the technique of classical ballet assumed a different, more stylized impostation. All right, let's warm up. What's wrong? Don't you feel well? No, it's nothing. I just feel a little weak. If it gets any worse, I'll just stop. And now some exercises. Daniel, you may begin. Rest for a second. Week. Come on, it's an easy step. This is the first time we've worked together. I want to see what you can do, how far along you are. Now, come along and join the others. Come on, let's go. Daniel. All together now. And one, and two, and three, and four. Run along. Come on, drink up. Oh, you. Oh, 
Alice. You must drink. Come you on. heard what the doctor Listen said. Up. Drink up. No. You Whoa. must drink. Oh. The blood loss oh. to hemorrhaging is gained back instantly with the intake of liquids. <laughs> All right, Professor Vertigas. Obviously. My dear madame, do not be concerned. It's nothing, as I've already told the young lady. That's a relief, Professor. How do you feel, dear? Better. The fault lies with your exercises. When somebody's been out of practice, violent movement could cause tiny tears in internal ligaments. And that's the hemorrhaging. You look better already. You've even got color back in your cheeks. Isn't that right? Oh, yes. She looks much better. How? Oh, still, this will get you back into shape in no time. There we are. Why, and why, in a day or two, you'll be on your feet as good as new. Who brought my bags here? I'll go. What a dear. The minute she heard that you were ill, she went right home and brought your things. When she also left me off $50, and she didn't take a penny of it. Why? Why did she do that? If I wanted to, I would... Well, my dear, what you need now is some peace and quiet. If the hemorrhaging should start again, which is very improbable, you can telephone me. And Tana, she used to eat bland food for about a week. And you mustn't let her have any food. A drop of Van Rouge? Yes. Good. A glass of red wine with each meal. It works miracles. It clears up anemia and strengthens red corpuscles. It builds the blood. Rest well. <laughs> You're in good hands. We're next door neighbors. So, you moved in here. Well, they moved me in here. I really didn't want to. You know, as soon as I got sick, your pal Olga ran and got my bags and threw me out of her place. She must have thought I had something awfully contagious. But I can't stand to live in a boarding school like a ten-year-old. Oh, wow. You come back strong. Yeah, you know, I feel really well. I mean, it's almost as if nothing had happened. It's incredible. And all thanks to Professor Verdigas. Verdigas? He came to look at you? Yeah. Come in. Hi, Pablos. Thank you. You better keep an eye on that lighter. He really likes it. Yes, but I don't think he's a thief. At least you know. Are you eating up here? Yeah, they put me on a restricted diet. And on a restricted diet, they give you wine. That's Professor Verdigas' idea. Says it'll build up my blood. The bell. Oh, God, that means it's only 15 minutes till supper. I'd better change. Ciao. See you later. Okay.
go and see. They're coming from the ceiling. In the meantime, everybody downstairs. nothing to do with you, madam. No, of course not, girls. It's not Madame Blank's fault. We ordered those cases of food by mail from a reliable firm that we thought to be honest. Obviously, it arrived spoiled. In a few days' time, you see what happened. Oh, it was awful. Yes, one got in my mouth. Well, I suppose we're fortunate those things only reached the floor below the attic. Are the other floors all right? Oh, yes, we checked them out. Just the floor where the students' rooms are. Well, I'll take care of the problem of fumigating in the morning. In the meantime, for tonight, I've thought of a makeshift arrangement. Go and see how they're getting along, will you, dear? The boys have kindly offered to help, and they and the servants are turning the practice hall into a dormitory. If some of you choose to find hotel rooms, I'll have no objections. But it's already late, and in any case, the inconvenience will only be for one night. We'll all sleep together. Bravo. All right? Yes, thank you. Fine. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. Good. Are you all right? Yes, Madame Blank, thank you. Oh, it's very comfortable, just like being in camp. Good. Are you sleeping here with us too, Madame Blank? Certainly, as are all the other teachers in Miss Tanner. Do the teachers live here at school? No, they live in town. They leave after supper at 9.30, just like clockwork. It's very late. You won't be afraid if I turn out the lights. Good night, everyone. Good night, Madame Blank. Good night. Madame Blank. Good night.
this weird kind of story. I tell you, it was so weird, I never forgot it. Listen. Hear that whistle? It's exactly the same. The next morning, Madame Blanc told me that the directress had spent a few hours in school and has slept in the room next to mine. Thank you. I'm very grateful you could take care of the fumigating so promptly. Good morning, Madame Blanc. Oh, good morning, Danny. Is everything in order now? All cleaned up, Madame. Just to be sure, we check the other floors too. Well, Miss Tanner, excuse me. Did the directress sleep here last night? No, she didn't. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Miss Tanner. Uh, you know she's away on a trip. Maybe she'd come to pay us a visit two weeks from now. Excuse me, Miss Tanner, but uh, which class do I attend this morning? The second year class in the Red Room. Thank you. What is it? Your lousy, disgusting dog has bitten Albert. He took a piece out of Albert's arm. What? Did you all hear that? That miserable dog tried to mutilate a child. Madame Blanc had to rush Albert to a first aid center to have stitches put in. That's impossible. Let's go to the first aid center. Even if you can't see the blood, at least you can hear that poor child's crying. That's enough now! My dog's a peaceful, faithful animal. He's never hurt anyone. The boy must have done something to him first. Oh, the poor little animal, the poor little puppy. If I ever see him within a mile of this school again, I'll have him put to death. Stop it! I won't allow such talk, you understand? You won't allow it. Then get out, you and your dog. Get moving. You bitch! Out! I'm going. I'm going. But try to understand that, that I'm blind, not deaf. Get it? Huh? Not deaf. Not deaf, you understand that? <laughs> you understand? Ah, <laughs> uh, fresh air. Let me out of this garden place. Get out. Get out of here. Good riddance. Oh, Pavlos, how much longer do I have to eat like this?
hear that? Yes.
Easy. What is it? Huh? Come on. Come on, let's go home. to pieces. Incredible. Oh, yeah, but you can never put too much trust in wolfhounds. They're crazy. We had two of them once at the Villa in Gestad. Mein Gott. First Pat gets murdered by a madman, and now Daniel is killed by his dog. Yeah, maybe there's a hex on the place. Yeah. Let's call in the exorcist and have a purge. What is it? Is something wrong? No, no, everything's all right. Is it something personal, dear? Oh, no. No, it's nothing like that. Miss Tanner, would you mind? I'd like a few moments alone with Susie. Well, what is it? I just wanted to talk to you about some of the things that have been happening here lately. Oh, I know you're upset by Daniel's death, as we all have been. No, but it's more than that. Does anybody know anything about who killed him? I spoke to the chief of police just this morning. He told me they had some definite clues. You know that I saw her the night that I arrived here? Yes, you told me that. And that she was mumbling some strange, unrelated word. No, you didn't tell me that. Because it was something that didn't make any sense. It was in the middle of a thunderstorm. I just didn't pay much attention to it. I only caught two words distinctly. Secret and irises. I don't know what they mean, but I thought they might be important. You've done very well, congratulations. I don't know what the word secret or irises mean either, but I think it's only right we should let the police know about it. I'm only amazed you waited two days before... Hello? 
You really mess things up. What are you talking about? Because maybe Pat was talking to someone just inside the building that night. And we know that someone wasn't one of the teachers. them on the hunt for somebody. What difference does that make to you? Big difference. Because I was Pat's friend. She was telling me something when you suddenly showed up. She got scared and she ran away. She was in hysterics almost. And then she was killed. Remember that voice when you rang the bell? Well, that was me. going away, she gave me all the notes. I've only told one person, a very good friend of mine, Frank Mandel, he's here for a convention. I'll let you read them tonight. Susie, wake up. Please, Susie, wake up. The notes are gone. Someone stole them from me. You understand? They disappeared. Don't fall asleep. Please, help me. Wake up. Help me.
Looking for Sarah. She's disappeared. But that's impossible. I just talked to her last night. She left this morning, as a matter of fact, without telling anyone. Just packed her bags and left. She was here leaving about six. You heard her leave, didn't you? Sarah? Oh, yes. I heard the door close and her footsteps going down the hall. And, and then I heard a car driving off down the street. I guess someone was waiting for her. But it's impossible. If she wasn't happy here, she could have at least told someone. 
Weisnikov like a thief. Hello, may I speak to Frank Mandel, please? Yes, thank you. Hello, this is Susie Banyan. Uh, no, we've never met. I'm a friend of Sarah's. Yes, hello. Do you happen to know where Sarah is? Uh, well, she disappeared from school this morning. Yes, it seems she left and took all her luggage. Yes. Uh, listen, could I see you sometime today? Well, I'm really worried about her. Oh, great. Where? At the convention center. Okay, I'll see you later. She didn't inform any of her classmates. I've already asked all of them. It's very upsetting. I can't understand why she did it. I'm the one who's held responsible by their families. I'll call her father in Geneva. Perhaps she might have gone there. I've already phoned Sarah's father. He's the Italian consul in Geneva. But he wasn't there today. He was away for the weekend. They said he'd be back by Monday. And they don't know anything about her there. Well, do you understand why I'm so worried? Yes, but before we both get upset, let's wait for the father's return. Maybe they got together this morning and went off on their own. I know her quite well. She was a patient of mine three years ago. Were you aware of that? No, I didn't even know you were a psychiatrist. Well, she had a nervous breakdown after her mother's death, and she came to me for treatment. After she got better again, we remained friends. But lately, she was upset about some notions put into her head by a friend of hers. Not you, I hope. No. They were kind of wild ideas. She had discovered that the TAM Academy was founded in 1895 by a certain Helena Marcos, a Greek immigrant, and that the local people believed her to be a witch. I guess you knew that. No, but I have a strange feeling that somebody already told me about it. Or something similar. I can't... can't remember. Well, that really got Sarah's imagination going. Earlier in the 19th century, the Marcus woman had been expelled from several European countries. She seemed to have something about her which, which urged religious thinking people to, to persecute her. She also wrote a number of books, and I read that, that among the initiated, she went by the name the Black Queen. After she settled down here, she became the subject of a lot of gossip. Nevertheless, she managed to put her hands on a great deal of money, and she founded the Tam Academy. At first, a sort of school of dance and occult sciences, but that didn't last long, because in 1905, after being hounded and cursed at for ten years, Madame Marcus died in a fire. That's all there is, as far as witchcraft is concerned. The school was taken over by her favorite pupil, the study of the occult was abandoned, and soon the place became the famous dance academy. But. What does it mean to be a witch? Well, as a believer in the material world and as a psychiatrist to boot, I'm convinced that the current spread of belief in magic and the occult is part of mental illness. Bad luck isn't brought by broken mirrors, but by broken minds. Excuse me. Milius? Professor Milius can answer your question better than I can. He wrote a book called Paranoia or Magic, and believe me, it's the final word in the subject. Excuse me, Milius, if you don't mind, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. Fräulein? She's interested in your favorite subject. Witches. Can you tell her something about the mysterious? Well, I have to go. I have an appointment to keep. Keep me posted, hmm? Hello. I'm sorry to bother you. Ah, so, what would you like to know? Do you believe in the existence of witches? Ah, I have known some women who are said to be witches. Really? I've studied the phenomenon for a long time. I'm of the opinion that it is an important appendage 
of contemporary psychiatry. Uh, you're skeptical, my dear. Well, uh, frankly, it is a little hard to believe. What do witches do? They are malefic, negative and destructive. Their knowledge of the art of the occult gives them tremendous powers. They can change the course of events and people's lives, but only to do harm. You don't believe me. <laughs> Their goal is to accumulate great personal wealth, but that can only be achieved by injury to others. They can cause suffering, sickness, even the death of those who, for whatever reason, have offended them. Why do you have all this interest in the occult? Because some friends spoke to me about witches. I read some stuff. Have you ever heard of Helena Marcus? Oh yes, she was a very famous black queen. A powerful witch with a tremendous talent for doing evil. A real mistress of magic. She lived and died in this city. Did you know that? Yes. And might there exist a guild of witches? The correct term would be a coven of witches. A woman becomes queen if her magic is a hundred times more powerful than the rest of the coven, which is like a serpent. Its strength rests with its leader, that is, with its head. A coven deprived of its leader is like a headless cobra, harmless. Skepticism is the natural reaction of people nowadays. Magic is ever present. In other words, quantum obique, quantum semper, quantum ad omnibus, creditor est. Which means that magic is everywhere and all over the world. It's a recognized fact. Always. Everybody. They have all gone to the theater for the opening of the Bolshoi. Then why didn't anyone tell me about it? I don't know. Miss Tana obtained tickets for everybody. Frank, this is Susie, Sarah's friend. Susie? Hello? I can't... Talk louder, I can't hear you very well. Did something happen? Uh, well, I haven't heard from Sarah, but... A lot of strange things are happening. I mean, I mean, for example, when I eat at night, I... Hello? Hello, Frank? Hello, can you hear me? Frank? Hello? 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 Hello, Frank, can you hear me?
They don't leave the school at all. The front door is on the left, but their footsteps are going to the right. find out where they're going by counting their footsteps.
I saw behind the door three irises. Turn the blue one. of an American girl. Vanish. She must vanish. Make her disappear. Understand? Vanish. She must vanish. She must die. Die. Give me power! Sickness! Sickness! Away with her! Away with trouble! Death! Death!